Tom Reed has just written an extraordinary new book called The Healing of America. Thank you, Susan. Thanks. And it describes um, healthcare systems in nine countries? Yeah, America. right, yeah. And I've been reading it, and it's a fabulous book. It's a fabulous read. Um, I hope everybody who sees this will go out and buy it. But the most important thing is um, that I think we need to think about the information that's in the book in terms of the current healthcare debate. Yeah. And tell us, Tom, how you think that your book can help us think more intelligently about healthcare as we look at, at reform proposals in this country. Well, uh, my trip around the world made me pretty optimistic. I know that we could cover everybody in America at reasonable costs, and the reason I know that is all the other countries like us do. All the other industrialized free market democracies provide health care of high quality for everybody, and they spend half as much as we do in the process. So how do they do that? And that's what I set out to figure out. And you know what, Suzanne? It is not all socialized medicine out there. Any American who thinks that. There are some countries where government provides the care and government pays for the care. That's probably socialized medicine, right? Right. And that's there, like the UK. The UK, and... Spain, Italy, Cuba, uh, Hong Kong, et cetera, New Zealand, pretty much. Um, there are some countries where the providers, the docs and hospitals, are private, but the government, the payment system is government. That would be Canada, is the paradigm case of that. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, I'm sorry, uh, Taiwan and South Korea, for example, cover everybody with private docs, private hospitals, but a public payment scheme, like Medicare, that's right. what they call it in Canada. And then many rich countries, Germany, France, uh, uh, Netherlands, Switzerland, Japan, cover everybody with private docs, private hospitals, and private insurance, they're private right. sector plans. Germany, uh, many of those countries have no Medicare because people stay with the private sector cradle to grave. Right. They have no Medicaid for poor people. The poor people are in the same system as everybody else. They think that's fairer. So I argue in my book, those systems are less socialized than the United States. So no, it is not all socialized medicine. Well, and what, what's interesting in your book, and you went around to the, these different countries with a bad shoulder yes. and went to doctors yeah. and said, I've got a bad shoulder, yeah. what will you do for me? Yeah. And, and in all of the systems, whether they were very socialized or they were a combination of private insurance, they... None of them said, you know, take your shoulder and go suffer. But Most of the countries offered me a full range, ranging from, you know, pain shots to physical therapy to surgery. I mean, a lot of countries would have replaced my shoulder for almost nothing, just yeah. as an American orthopod would. But not all. Right. In Canada, where they have long waiting lines for right. elective surgery, they told me to go to an orthopedic surgeon. I said, how long would it take? 10 or 12 months. I never even got to the doctor in Canada because the waiting line was so long. What about the UK? And in the UK, uh, which is, I thought, a very, my family lived there, good health care system. Everybody's covered. You never get a bill. It's a government function. But they're pretty stingy. And they said, go home. Yeah. We're not going to, you know, you're a successful journalist. I ski, I ride a bike, I hike. So I don't have a golf swing. You know, yeah. we don't care. We're not going to spend the money it would take to fix your shoulder so that a uh, aging journalist can get a golf swing. They just said, live with it. And you know what? Even that helped a little. I mean, I've been moaning and groaning about this pain in my shoulder for years. And my British doctor said, hey, you're living a pretty good life. Go home and live with it. Yeah. And that, even that helped a little. That's the stiff upper lip notion. Yeah, know? right. And there's a lot of that in Britain because it's a good system, covers everybody, but there are a lot of things they won't do. That's how they say, yeah. here's the deal in Britain. Everybody is in the system. Everybody in that country is covered cradle to grave. There's a pool of money, and that provides health care for everybody. So their mindset is, hey, if they spend 50000 of their medical care doctor dollars to fix a shoulder that really doesn't need to be fixed, then that's some sick baby who won't be treated, if right. you follow me. So in Britain, one of the reasons people accept these controls, the stiff upper lip, is because you know that the money is going to help some other sick person. Now in America, if my private insurance company said to me, we're not going to pay to fix your shoulder, that money's going to go to their investors. It's going to pay right. more profits. It's not right. going to help somebody else. So it's a little harder to... Except it's harder to have a stiff upper lip in our system 
since when they say no to you, it's not like they're saying yes to somebody else. They're keeping the money. Right, and they're making somebody like, I mean, I one of the statistics that I think was most extraordinary was from an article by two physicians, David Himmelstein and Steffi Wohinder, and yeah. they talked about the amount of money that the CEO, former CEO of Aetna made in a day. And it was something like two hundred twenty-three thousand dollars in one day. This guy made. And yeah, I, they're all in that range. I yeah. mean, the guy from Cigna actually makes more. The guy from WellPoint makes slightly less. But look, working in private insurance in America is an incredibly lucrative line of work. Right. And the reason is because of the cruel things they do. They won't cover anybody who's sick and might actually make a claim. Yeah. Well, that enhances their profit and increases the uh, take-home pay for the CEO. They employ armies of underwriters to deny claims. Uh, and you know what? That doesn't happen in other countries. In other countries that have private insurance, they have to pay every claim. Tell us a little bit about these private insurance systems like, like Germany or France or Japan. Japan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the striking thing is, that, A, they're not single payer. Japan has 3,000 different payers. Um, and B, uh, they're not government. These are private insurance pools where people pay in. In Germany, the employer and the employee split the cost of the premium of private insurance. Does that sound familiar? Nothing strange about that. Right. Uh, but they're different from what we would call health insurance in America for these reasons. The insurance companies have to cover everybody. They can't turn you down. And the corollary of that is everybody has to buy insurance. Otherwise, right. insurance doesn't work. They have to pay every claim. They can't turn down a claim if a doctor or hospital sends it in. they got to pay. They have to pay pretty fast. In France, a doctor has to be paid within three days. Wow. And, ha and in this country, what's the average? Uh, I don't do know. know? It, it, uh, doctors it's would way. tell you it's two months, and insurance companies would tell you it's two or three weeks. Who knows what's right, right. but it's not three days. Yeah. They sit on the money because they're earning money on the float, right. you know, right. is right. part of the reason. And they deny... You know, probably one in four claims are denied. Just initially. off the top for no reason? or Well, they right? claim there's a reason. Right. I uh, argued with the insurance executives, come on, you turn down claims because they want to, in my family, if the insurance company doesn't pay, uh, my spouse says, oh, come on, let's pay Dr. Jones. She's really nice. Yeah. And I think that's what the insurance companies want to happen. But I will say they deny that when I ask them. They say, oh, no, 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 we try right. to pay every claim. Right. Um, in those other countries, they can't cut you off if you get sick the way American insurance companies do. They're not allowed to have a lifetime limit on payouts like American insurance companies do. And most important, they have a limit on the administrative costs. Now, right. you know, America's big insurance plans with those huge salaries you mentioned have administrative costs in the range of 18 to 25 percent. They add about 20 percent to every bill they pay. Right. Um, in other countries, that's limited by regulation. So in France, the administrative cost is a little under 5%. Germany, 5.5%. Japan, 5.5%. I don't think those countries are any better business people or more efficient than we are, but they have rules, and the right. insurance companies have to follow the rules. Right. And that saves hundreds of millions of dollars for their systems over what America.